Hello and welcome back to me ranting about why my second year of college is a total crap. But no, that's not right. Uh, welcome back to uh, Helium Lemon 15's narrated playthrough, walkthrough. Not necessarily a walkthrough, because I'm not really helping anybody through the game. Although you can use this to help yourself through the game. Um, and today is October the 12th. And I am bothering my neighbors by the recording this video game, uh, even though this is post-commentary. Uh, what times we live in? I've just had word from our patrons. They say they don't think they can continue to sponsor the aquarium. There must be something we can do to change their minds. Well, maybe we can. If they only understood the potential of this aquarium, they would never pull out. To convince them that it's worth... And for that, we need more animals in the tanks and more exciting materials to create special displays. I want to have more than 140 species and breathtaking special displays. The feeding habits of blue whales. B2 in the Arctic. They primarily feed during the day. Ooh, we have a field assignment. It's kind of like whose line is it anyway, where they have to do the newscast reports, but they, they're standing in front of a green screen, and they can't tell what, you know, what the video behind them is playing. But then, they, but then the other guys have to make jokes about it so that they can they can tell. And anyway, so now um now that we've gotten this far in the game, uh, running the aquarium will start to become a more uh, more serious side job of ours. And we're we're like the co-curator of the museum. We're like we're deciding what fish go in every tank and everything. And we're trying to, you know, curate it in such a way that our profits will go up and will attract a certain number of visitors. It's this whole side quest. So just because this is fairly time-consuming and repetitive, I'm speeding it up. And hopefully you don't have to see it many times, but I don't know. It's more, f it's not that fun to watch, but it's kind of relaxing if you're just on your, you know... If you're playing this game at home and you're just like, man, I'm running an aquarium and I get the, I have all these different choices of fish and I get to place them in the exhibits. So now we're done in the aquarium. Oh, and you get money from running the aquarium. You get like a, like, I forget if it's 10% or 1% of like the number of people who visit. But it's a, it, you know, it, it adds up over time. And especially because uh, in this part of the game, we'll, uh, we'll have to spend, uh, forever grinding for money before we can uh, open the Cavern of the Gods back up, which kind of stinks, um, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that works out, you know, let me know. I keep devolving into a Sonor card gauge accent. It's like, you it. What's the line? You, he told you. And you decided to take it face value something a guy who talks to melting candy bars said. And who not... No, a guy who lives in a bush and talks to melting candy bars said. And who not 15 minutes ago told me I might paste away if I didn't eat more. You really might, Pez Dispenser. Besides, everyone knows the only way to save Sonora is to pour gravy on a bunch of... No, it's is cut a bunch of sports magazines in half and pour gravy on the defibrillator. I like so. Oh my goodness grandness. It really is. A December ween mackerel. And nobody's dying. Okay, I, I just quoted the entire end of that cartoon. I, I'm a little... I like Homestar Runner a little bit, if you can't tell. <laughs> I was just trying to, trying to get some good card gauge quotes, like that whole cartoon where it's like it's a, it's a home mortgage commercial. That's the appeal of Homestar Runners. They make fun of really banal like American culture sort of things. Like they have this whole ridiculous um, home mortgage commercial where it's like it's Sonor Card Gauge, who's like this homeless old guy, who kind of rambles like he has half a burn. Oh. This is kind of important. I wanted to quote Sinor Card Gauge Mort Gauge, or no, it's Sinor Mort Gauge. Anyway. I just tried it on an inch. Oh, yeah, so. So, yeah, there's just some special seaweed that we got, and everybody's like, oh, let's, you know, make it into medicine. 
We've only tried it on one animal. We don't know what side effects it could produce in others. I should set a dedicated lab in the aquarium. Just one thing. Do you think it should be sent for proper medical testing? Dad, or Grandpa, that's exactly what she means. Really, Jean Eric, do you think that anyone is more qualified than Hoayako? I'm surprised you would even <laughs> entertain the notion that somebody could do it better than she can. Wow. Well, I suppose you're right. Just don't forget to mention L&L Diving Service. I have to thank you, too. I couldn't have done this without your diving expertise. Here's your reward, my new jacket. Infiltration BCD. Which is really pointless, it's just an accessory, but like, you have like different BCDs in this game. Oh, this is important. It's Gene Eric, contemplating life. Nine Ball Island certainly has become... I hope you're watching us, Matthias. Wherever you are. Into the sunset. Looking for our lost passion. Anyway, yeah. I like that. That's cool. That's kind of a touching, touching moment. The Sonor card gauge voice works pretty well with John Eric. There's Dusky Planet. That's for getting 40% of the coins. Oh, and I completed a bunch of maps, so I'm gonna get a bunch of money, money from Oceana real quick. Ready and money! Yay! Money! Yay! Oh, something that I could talk about, but I haven't been talking about at all is making progress on this game, which is never gonna happen. No, I'm kidding. It's a, the collection of Steam games that I've been slowly but surely been building up. Um, I don't know if I'm great at, I mean, I really see games that are interesting to me and then I buy them as soon as like I see they go on sale or something. But I, I don't have, I'm honestly, I don't think I have the most stellar of Steam libraries out there. And I can't uh, run a lot of like the really high processing games on this laptop because I got this laptop so I could work, not so I could game. <laughs> and I'm not really a big PC gamer anyway. But you know, I got a lot of things. You know, like point and click games, like puzzle platformers, like puzzle games, uh, like RPGs. Well, I have Undertale. Yeah, Undertale is good, by the way. I don't know if I'm going to play it on my channel because it's a bit overdone, but uh, I still need to play that game a lot more and explore the different endings. I want to play it on my channel at least a little bit because I like it a lot. Um, but yeah, I've found some really interesting games on Steam, and I hope to get to play as some of them too. Uh, I know I've talked about this on my channel before, but one of my favorite games that I've found is, uh, and for free actually, is, is one of uh, Scott Cawthon's uh, games before the Five Nights at Freddy's uh, franchise. It's called The Desolate Hope. And I have to do an LP of that, like in the next, in the next couple of LPs that I do. Like, it's, it's guaranteed. Um, yeah, and I have a lot of games that I've kind of, I've sort of played a little bit. I have Braid in my collection, which I'm really excited about. And, yeah, I've, I've played all these different games that I've just played a little bit of them. What's a, another really good game? I, like, I really like The Dream Machine. I really like Find You. Um... Uh... I'm liking Deponia. Oh, this is important. Thank you for that photo. Pass it on to him. If he's been there before, it should do the trick. Yes, with any luck, this photo will remind him of something. And here's your reward for the photo. Some tank that I don't care about. Okay, so looks like we're getting to this end of the episode, so let's watch Nancy ride off into the sunset. Like a cowboy in Montana. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one. Goodbye.